Hi, and welcome to the next part of my implementation of Lab 8 Trivia from the CS50X course. Today we're going to cover the free response question part, uh, which is in fact a bit easier than the previous one, or um, at least it's similar to the previous one. So if you have watched my previous, um, my previous video on this problem, it should be quite easy for you to implement this logic too. So let's first read what we are expected to do and then we'll go on to the IDE and write some code. In index HTML, add beneath part 2 a text-based free response question of your choosing with HTML. You should use an H3 heading for the text of your question. You should use an input field to let the user type a response. And you should use a button to let the user confirm their answer. Using JavaScript, add logic so that the text field changes color when a user confirms their answer. So if the user types an incorrect answer and presses the, co the confirmation button, the text field should turn red and text should appear beneath the question that says incorrect. If the user types the correct answer and presses the confirmation button, the input field should turn green and text should appear beneath the question that says correct. So let's go to the IDE. That's what we did last time, so we completed the multiple choice part. Now let's go beneath part 2, where we should add first the HTML of the free response question. So let's go back. We should have a, an H3 heading for the text of the question. Let's do that. So H3. And um, I'm going to write a yes or no questions, true or false, something like that. Um, is it true? I know that doesn't make much sense. Usually, when you have quizzes, you don't have such questions, um, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use such a question. So, is it true that it's the same? That's the definition I got from the internet. <laughs> Um, so, in brackets, I'm going to just write some instructions and answer with yes or no. We're done with the H3 and now let's, um, let's implement the input field. So, we're going to have input. The type is going to be text. Um, let's uh, put a placeholder, something like... Um, just type your answer. By the way, um, I'm not sure if you if you um, know what a placeholder means. Let me start the HTTP server just to show that. It should be explained on the lecture, but I am not sure. So let me show it. So there we go. Uh, a placeholder is a text that is displayed inside of the input field. But whenever you start start typing, it's gone. That's just used. Um, in order to, to show some instructions or hints, but uh, it disappears as soon as you start writing. Okay, so we have a placeholder, and maybe we should add a class or an ID. Um, since we only have one of these, we can use an ID. Let's do that, because I haven't used any IDs yet. The previous time I used classes, so um, let's do IDs now. ID is going to equal free answer, free response, no. Okay, let's see if we answer. It doesn't really matter. You can choose your own ID. Okay, we implemented this input field and we can already see it on our page. And the last thing we should have, let me just check that, is a button. So we're going to have button. Let me add an, another ID because we only have one confirmation button. If there are more, you should use a class. And I'm going to say confirm confirm button like that and let's say that inside the text inside of it is going to be submit answer like that now let's save this file go back to see if we can see it yes the styles have been applied so we can go back and implement the JavaScript logic because now whatever I write I'm going to click on submit answer but I don't see any result so let's change that Let's go to the JavaScript part and see what kind of function we're going to create. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need 
is the confirmation button because we want to attach an event listener to it. So whenever the user clicks on this button, I want you to check the answer. So how can we select this button? Well, we already have an ID, which is confirm button. So I can go here, I can place it at the top here, in the, play, in the same place where I took a reference to the buttons from the, from the multiple choice uh, question and I can say let submit button element equals document query selector and now since this is an ID I should not use a dot because a dot is for a class and if you want to, to take the ID an element by ID we should use a hashtag so hash then confirm button now we have a reference to it. Let's just come here and console log it to make sure that we have selected it correctly. Uh, submit button element. Let's save, go back to see if we have the reference in our console. Um, yes, we do. And in fact, if I hover over it with my mouse, I can see that it gets green. So that's okay. We have selected it correctly. And now the next step is to attach the event listener to it. So let me remove this console log. And below the for loop, I'm going to say submit button element, add event listener. So um, we're going to listen for a particular event to be triggered. So in this case, we're going to say when the, the user clicks on this button, I want you to execute a function. So what kind of function are we going to create? Let's first create it and then we're, we're going to finish this. So I'm going to say function and let's say that it's going to be called free the response for now it's not going to take in any parameters and now what do we want this function to do we want it to select the input field then check the value and depending on the the, the value inside of this input field we're going to either uh, change the background to green or red in in of course add text with correct or incorrect um, so okay, we have this function, we're going to, to fill it in right now, but let's first come back here to, 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 to complete this because otherwise we may forget. So when a user clicks on the submit button, I want you to call um, this function, which is called free response. So free response. That should work. Let me just come here and say cons console log hi to make sure that it works. So refresh, I'm going to click on submit answer and we can see hi. So this works. And now let's actually implement this function. The first element we are going to need is the input field itself, right? Because we want to check the value inside of it. So how can we select it? Well, again, we can use the ID, which is free answer or free response, maybe. Let's say free response. Or maybe even free response input. But for now, I'm going to, oops. For now, I'm going to leave it this way. Um, I don't know why this space is added. Okay. So I want to come here and say, let's answer input element equals document. So go to the document and select, so query selector, the element with an ID of free response. And let's now come here and say console log and log this element to make sure that we have selected it correctly. I highly recommend you do that every time you're selecting an element, or at least in the beginning. Um, when you're more experienced, there is um, less chance to, to you know, write a wrong selector or something like that. But in the beginning, it's okay to, to do that. Okay, so we see the input. We have selected it correctly. So we can continue. We have the input field and now we want to take the value of that input field. So I can say let's answer equals the value of this element. So let me step back a bit. So I'm going to console log um, the answer input field elements again. And after that, I'm going to only, uh, only print the answer. So console log answer like that let me come here and refresh so let me write something random and when i click on submit answer the first time we have the entire input field we have the entire html element and the second time by saying 
take the element and give me the value I'm actually seeing the answer I have written inside of it, this input field and that's what I need so I'm going to answer yes or no and based on that I'm going to change the background and the text so let's do that let me remove these console logs because we don't need them anymore Oops. only this line like that so this question here that I've written is a true a true statement so is it true the answer should be yes so I'm going to come here and say if the answer is yes then it's correct and I should change the background color to green right that, that's my first task so answer input elements that's this input field here background uh, sorry first I, sh I should say style then background equals green so take this element which is the input field we have already selected it here at on line 41 take this element go to its styles and change the background color to green because that's what uh, what's expected here the text field to turn red if it's wrong and turn green if it's correct else if the answer is no which is wrong I want it to turn it red so style background is going to take red. All right, let's go back. Uh, let's say this. Go back to our website and try to see if it works. So I'm going to say yes. It should turn green now. Okay, we have a green background, and let's try writing no. So now the text is uh, the background. Sorry, is red. So this works. And there is just one last step, which in fact we implemented last time as well, and that's to add uh, a text below the input field, which says either correct or incorrect. So we can pretty much copy the logic from last time. We should create a new H4 element, and again, it could be a P, you know, a paragraph or something like that, or an H5. Uh, but we can so we should create a new H4. And then, based on if the, the answer is correct or not, we should change the text content to either correct or incorrect. Let's do this. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say let new H4 element equals document create element with a tag of h4 so now what this does is it creates something like that now the, the markup here is a bit weird but yeah it, it just creates an h4 element which is currently empty and that's why inside of our if else statement we want to add content to it so we want to add a text inside of this h4 so if the answer is yes I want to add a text of correct. I'm going to say new h4 element text content equals um, correct. And in a similar way, when I come here, I want to say, you, you know, if, if the answer is no, I want to say new h4 element text content equals incorrect. Like that, let me just put a semicolon. And we're almost done. We just need to append this element into the div. So let's go back to the structure here. We currently have a div with a couple of children. It has five children. An H2, uh, this HR, which is just a horizontal line. It has an H3, an input field, and a button. And what we aim for is to add another H4 here, like that, and say correct or incorrect based on the answer. So how can we do that? We have already created our H4, but we have not indicated where exactly we want to display it on our page. So below this if else statement, we need to, to append it to the div. And if you go back to the previous time code, which is here, we can see that we, we took the reference to the div element by using the parent element. So that's, I'm going to do the same thing now. I'm going to come here and write answer input element. Uh, put element. Did I misspell it? No, I haven't. Okay. So take this input field and give me the parent element. So if we go back to the HTML, what's the parent of this input field? Well, the parent is this tag, which is, you know, one indentation or four, um, four spaces to the left. So that's the div. That's the parent and it has five children. So the parent of the input is the div itself. And I can say um, let div element equals the parent element, the parent element of this input field. So 
take the input field and give me the parent element. Once I have this parent element, I can I can come here and say div element append child new h4 element. So let's go to the website, try it, and then I'm going to to explain this once more. Even though if you have watched my previous part, you should um, understand what's going on. But in case you haven't, I'm going to explain. It. So I click on submit answer. I see the text of correct, and the background is green. If I say no. I should see text of incorrect and a red background. Now again, this doesn't work perfectly because uh, I don't want to be able to change my answer and see multiple uh, multiple responses here, but I'm going to fix that in the next part. For now, I'm only covering the basic functionality. So again, what we're doing here is we are creating a new H4 element, which is empty in the beginning. Then based on the answer the student or the user in general writes, we want to add text into this H4, which is either going to be correct or incorrect. After that, I want to take the, a reference to the entire development, to the entire thing that contains all of these, um, all of these input fields and buttons and text. And I want to append this, this, new, this newly created H4 element at the end of my div, so below everything else. That's what I'm doing here, and this part is identical to the one from the previous video. That was everything for this part. I hope you liked it. I also give private JavaScript lessons, so if you're interested, feel free to message me. I also have a Discord server for CS50 students. If you have any questions, you can, you can send them there as well. Bye for now, and I'm going to see you in the third part.